To begin our consideration of extrasensory perception, we introduce this depiction of a closed network for a single person whom we will call a psychic system. In this closed network model, we see that there is a central psyche, the ego, depicted in black, surrounded by any number, here eight are used, of their closest friends, family, lovers, bosses, peers, and enemies, depicted in red. Beyond these are another layer of people, further periphery to the central ego, who may or may not know one another, who may or may not share some of the same close friends or enemies as the ego, and who may or may not know the central ego as more distant acquaintances. In this closed net model, we see the third layer depicted as 16 blue figures around the outside of the deck. This closed network represents the mode of the subconscious mind of any individual person or psychic system. They are peripherally aware of all the connections between their closer and more distant friends and enemies. However, rarely it occurs to the central ego that this entire network is designed to be able to continue to function in the central ego's absence. Our friends, close and far, and enemies likewise surrounding us on all sides just hidden would experience as smooth a transition as possible should the central ego connecting them all be removed. This is the core essence of this closed network model. The type of psychic system that functions in the closed network model will likewise have a closed set of emotional and behavioral parameters as well. In this diagram, color-coded according to the seven color spectrum, we depict a model that functions at a right angle or inward from the center of the model of the closed network we examined before. The closed network represents surrounding facets reflecting aspects of the central ego, while the colors here represent the ego's capacity to communicate through overcoming its internal emotional reactions to these exterior stimuli. We see the seven color spectrum divided with violet at the top, representing the most successful and effective form of verbal communication, a two-way conversation between two individual central egos within a closed network psychic system. Here, the talking head on the left already has the next lowest step on their mind, while the interlocutor on the right is dwelling on the blank condition and attempting to ignore its having already been imprinted with its own prior experiences. This form of communication is calm, stable, and self perpetuating On the indigo level of interpersonal relationships, according to this model, we see the two primary egos beginning to take turns speaking and communicating their point of view on their topical message. The speaker has their mind set on the next step in the process, i.e. evoking reciprocation, while the listener has their mind on the previous moment, wherein both communicated in contextual conversation. On the blue level, we find the indigo level situation reversed between person A and person B, wherein now the listener begins to speak, and the previous speaker must cease speaking and begin to listen instead. Again, the mind of person A is on the future, or the next step in the discussion to follow, and person B's mind remains set on the past and contemplating the information it had previously been listening to. On the green level, we see that it is now person A's turn to speak again. However, their mind, by focusing on predicting the future based on past experience of similar cycles, has already slipped down into the next less effective level of communication, depicted by the hot color, yellow. Person B, meanwhile, has turned their back on person A already, having come to the conclusion their unique contribution to the prescribed rule determined for them in context of the communication has come to a conclusion. Their mind is thus depicted in blue. On the yellow level of interpersonal social communications, we find a further deterioration in the equity of the data exchange between the two parties, as person B speaks over their shoulder to person A without turning around to face them yet. The speaker's mind is on the better past, but the listener's mind will interpret it as an insult to their own careful expectations. On the orange level, we find that now person A has turned to leave and person B has turned back around to face them. Person B's mind is still tense and hostile, however they yet offer means of restarting the process of communication over, even though by this point no such relationship of trust will be undamaged by the degree of disagreement being depicted. 
Ursinae's mind will remain unswayed and seek to counterpoint this offer with a rebuttal. On the red level, person A, that is, the one who began to monopolize the conversation first, leaves the conversation completely, blaming the other party they were communicating with for the failure and breakdown of their rapport. Over their shoulder, behind their back, to the yet regretful and hopeful mind of person B, person A tenders a final insult and departs, their brain now transformed from the speaker to the seeker, to become a listener in the role of person B to another different primary ego within their closed network psychic system. What is important to remember is that there is a dynamic active process at work affecting the changes described within this model. The weight of concentration draws us downward into the cycle of communication, and it is only by lightening up our deep thoughts and gravitas that we can maintain afloat in the uppermost levels where communication is moderate and moods are temporary. Now, in the next model, we will be examining an open network model of the psychic system that can be considered psychically awake and aware to their surrounding environment, even those influences invisible to their five senses. Note well that this model is identical in essential structure to the closed network, with one significantly important difference. In this model, the central ego uses their immediate friends to increase the level of communication between its own mind in the minds of the others more peripheral to it. This is not direct mind control, as we shall discuss the method for in a moment. However, this is ubiquitous expansion of conscious self-awareness. Insofar as the system remains closed in overall energy level, the more the central ego ascends the scale of communication skills, the more the surrounding and circumferential friends, foes, and strangers will be drawn inward and upward toward them and become inspired by whatever their cause. A form of power accessible to a mind who has awakened their central ego to an open network psychic system method can be used to read minds, which is acceptable to some limited extent, as well as to overwrite other people's minds, and this ability should be studied, but not practiced, avoided, not exercised, and considered an evil that is never necessary. That is the heart of mind control. In the model for the additional levels of nonverbal communication accessible to the mind who has awakened their full potential capacity by expanding their self-awareness to describe a more open network for their complete psychic system, we see four additional stages of nonverbal communication. However, only three of these are extrasensory, while the lowest one marked in red represents a condition wherein two minds are neither active toward nor aware about one another and there is thus zero exchange of information between them at all. The topmost rung on the short step ladder for nonverbal directly mental telepathic communication, or mind reading, represents when neither party is present to the other's immediate sensory awareness, but both sides of the equation are balanced and contributing equally to the psychic connection between them. This bond is often considered the same as the emotion of love, However, love is the upward pole on the ladder of seven basic verbal communications levels. While this condition of equal telepathy exists as a purely ideal state, devoid of possible emotional change. The second rung from the top of our model of nonverbal communication is a one-way broadcast of telepathic or non-sensorily direct intent or willpower being projected from one person to another. In this model, we see that both minds of the two people remain color-coded as indirect, mutual telepathic communication, such that they reflect one another, even though this communication is now proceeding in only a one-way direction. The third and final rung of our model of telepathic nonverbal communication is also a form of one-way broadcasting or projected subliminal sensory stimulation. However, in this model, we see that the mind of the broadcasting psychic projector reflects back onto the above condition, while the mind of the recipient of their signal has closed off in a reflection of the lowest, completely non-communicating level in red. This is the evil side of mind reading. Psychic vampirism, when someone you do not know personally robs you of your will to live and enjoyment of being alive, to the extent that you are willing to cave into living on conditions set by them, regardless of how distant they are from you, or, even worse, sacrificing your very life to show your devotion to them, regardless of their causes, motives, and objectives. The last model we'll consider briefly here is a lattice formed by interweaving the Tree of Life diagram of Hakala 
and the Tree of Death diagram of Clifoth. It has seven central nodes of intersection along its central vertical axis, and these correspond to the gross levels of profane communication. Other correspondences are given in this diagram also, however the primary comparison is made between the seven levels of communication and the seven chakras of the Veda, Hindu, and Buddhists.